It may seem strange that in the black country south of the 20s and 30s, where the leap to grace of gospel music was at the heart of the community, the blues singers, in a twisted way, were the real Puritans, these men who had to renounce the blues to be sanctified, who often sneered at the preachers in their songs, were the ones who really believed in the devil. They feared the devil most because they knew him best. They understood far better than the preachers why sex was man's original sin, and they sang about little else. This side of the blues did not come from Africa, but from the Puritan revival of the Great Awakening, the revival that spread across the American colonies more than 200 years ago. It was an explosion of dread and piety that Southern whites passed on to their slaves and that blacks ultimately refashioned into their own religion. The blues singers accepted the dread but refused the piety. They sang as if their understanding of the devil was strong enough to force a belief in God out of their lives. They lived man's fear of life and they became artists of the fear. Or perhaps that is not the truth. Perhaps Robert Johnson was very different from other blues singers. For all his clear stylistic ties to Sun House, Skip James and others, there are ways in which he stands apart. Part of this is musical. It has to do with the quality of his imagery, his impulse to drama, the immediacy of his singing and guitar playing. But mostly it is Johnson's determination to go farther into the blues than anyone else and his ability as an artist to get there. Anyone from Muddy Waters to Mick Jagger to Michael Jackson could put across the inspired pornography of Johnson's, quote, terraplane, a good rough car of the 30s, blues, end of quote. I'm going to get deep down in this connection. Keep on tangling with your wires. I'm going to get deep down in this connection. Keep on tangling with your wires. And when I mash down on your little starter, then your spark going to give me fire. But as, but as for, quote, stones in my pathway, end of quote, which was the other side of sex, no one has been fool enough to try. Few men could brag like Robert Johnson, quote, stuff I got to bust your brains out, baby, end of quote, he sang in Stop Breaking Down Blues. Quote, it'll make you lose your mind, end of quote. Women crowded around him at the backcountry juke joints to find out if it was true, and no doubt it often was. But such tunes gave way to songs like, quote, phonograph blues, end of quote, where Johnson sings with far too much emotion, it seems, about his broken record player. Quote, what evil have I done? What evil has the poor girl heard? End of quote. That one line shows us how far he is trying to go. The poor girl is the phonograph. Softly personified, she refuses to play Johnson's wicked records and breaks down. With a blazing insistence, Johnson intensifies his personification, unveils his metaphors. At once, you see him struggling with his machine and in bed with his girl. The records are his sins. The phonograph is penis. The song ends as a confession that the sins his records embody have made him impotent. What Johnson found on his road was mostly this, quote, the sense that life is essentially a cheat and its conditions are those of defeat and that the redeeming satisfactions are not, quote, happiness and pleasure, end of quote, but the deeper satisfactions that come out of struggle, end of quote. So wrote Fitzgerald to his daughter about what he had found in Lincoln and Shakespeare and, quote, all great careers, end of quote. His words make good company for Stanley Booth's, quote, the dedication the blues demands lies beyond technique. It makes being a blues player something like being a priest. Virtuosity in playing blues licks is like virtuosity in celebrating the mass. It is empty. It means nothing. Skill is a necessity, but a true blues player's virtue lies in his acceptance of his life, a life for which he is only partly responsible. When Bucca White sings a song he wrote during his years on Parchman Prison Farm, quote, I wonder how long till I can change my clothes, end of quote, he is celebrating honestly and humbly his life. I'm going to reread that. It's just too good. What Johnson found on his road was mostly this, quote, the sense that life is essentially a cheat and its conditions are those of defeat and that the redeeming satisfactions are not, quote, happiness and pleasure, end of quote, but the deeper satisfactions that come out of struggle, end of quote. So wrote Fitzgerald to his daughter about what he had found in Lincoln and Shakespeare and, quote, all great careers, end of quote. His words make good company, company for Stanley Booth's, quote, the dedication, the blues, demands, lies beyond technique. 
It makes being a blues player something like being a priest. Virtuosity in playing blues licks is like virtuosity in celebrating the mass. It is empty. It means nothing. Skill is a necessity, but a true blues player's virtue lies in his acceptance of his life, a life for which he is only partly responsible. When Bucka White sings a song he wrote during his years on Parchman Prison Farm, quote, I wonder how long till I can change my clothes, end of quote, he is celebrating, honestly and humbly, his life. When acceptance and celebration mean the same thing, or when the two words must fill the same space in the mind at once, we can begin to grasp the tension and the passion of Robert Johnson's music. Because when one accepts one's life by celebrating it, one also asks for something more. In Johnson's blues, the singer's acceptance is profound because he knows and makes us see that his celebration is also a revolt. And that the revolt will fail because his images cannot deny the struggles they are meant to master. I'm going to reread those last few sentences too. So damn good. When acceptance and celebration mean the same thing or when the two words must fill the same space in the mind at once, we can begin to grasp the tension and the passion of Robert Johnson's music. Because when one accepts one's life by celebrating it, one also asks for something more. In Johnson's blues, the singer's acceptance is profound because he knows and makes us see that his celebration is also a revolt and that the revolt will fail because his images cannot deny the struggles they are meant to master. This next part is a quote from Perry Miller's On the Puritan View of the World, which is printed by the Beacon Press in 1968 um, from something called The New England Mind, the 17th Century. It is obvious that man dwells in a splendid universe, a magnificent expanse of earth and sky and heavens which manifestly is built upon a majestic structure. Maintain some mighty design, though man himself cannot grasp it. Yet for him, it is not a pleasant or satisfying world. In his few moments of respite from labor or from his enemies, he dreams that this very universe might indeed be perfect. Its laws operating just as now they seem to do, and yet he and it somehow be in full accord. The very ease with which he can frame this image to himself makes the reality all the more mocking. It is only too clear that man is not at home in this universe, and yet he is not good enough to deserve a better. End of quote. When Robert Johnson traveled through the Deep South over to Texas and back to Memphis and to the Midwest and up to Chicago across the border to Canada and back to Detroit to sing spirituals on the radio to New York City, the sight of this primitive blues singer gazing up at the lights of Times Square is not only banal, it is bizarre. To the South again, he was tracing not only the miles on the road, but the strength of its image. It was the ultimate American image of flight from homelessness. And he always looked back. The women he left or who left him chased him through the gloomy reveries of his songs, just as one of them eventually caught up. Like a good American, Johnson lived for the moment and died for the past. Sometimes the road was just the best place to be, free and friendly, a good way to put in the time. And, quote, from four until late, end of quote, there's even a girl waiting at the other end. Quote, when I leave this town, I'm going to bid you fair, farewell. When I leave this town, I'm going to bid you fair, farewell. And when I return again, you'll have a great long story to tell. There is the grace and bitterness of rambling on my mind, which Johnson played with his walking bass figure that was to define Chicago blues, making the song sound just like a man pushing himself down the highway, half against his will. The slow sexual menace of traveling Riverside blues. The nightmare of crossroads where Johnson is sure to be caught by whites after dark and does not know which way to run. There's always one more, quote, strange man's town, end of quote, one more girl, one more drink. There is the last word of, quote, hellhound on my trail, end of quote. Quote, I gotta keep moving, I gotta keep moving, blues falling down like bail, blues falling down like bail. 
Blues falling down like bail, blues falling down like bail, and the days keep on minding me. There's a hellhound on my trail. Hellhound on my trail. Hellhound on my trail. It wasn't the open road, to say the least, more like Ishmael falling in behind funeral processions because they made him feel more alive and on good terms with death. You could imagine what the two travelers would have to say to each other. This is no way for a young man to act. That spirit gives us what might be Johnson's most American image, these lines from, quote, me and the devil blues, end of quote. Most American because, as a good, defiant laugh at fate, they are vital not only beneath the surface of American life, but on it. They are often called in as proof of Johnson's despair, and they are part of it, but also his most satisfied lines. A proud epitaph, quote, You may bury my body down by the highway side. Babe, I don't care where you bury my body when I'm dead and gone. You may bury my body, oh, down by the highway side so my old evil spirit can get a Greyhound bus and ride. Robert Johnson had a beautiful high voice, a tragic voice when he meant it to be. In Walking Blues, he wakes up to find that his woman has left him without even his shoes. He is plainly in awe of this woman. Well, he sings to himself, she's got Elgin movements. From her head down to her toes, from her head down to her toes. When he says the worried blues are the worst he ever had, he's still too full of admiration for that woman to make you believe him. So he will sing with a distracted comic determination, quote, Lord, I feel like blowing wet... Lord, I feel like blowing my old lonesome home. Got up this morning, my little Bernice was gone. Now up this light, oh, my lonesome home. End of quote. And then with utter grace, his voice rises, almost fades away, and there is a soft moan that could echo in your heart for a long time. A melancholy too strong to step around. Quote, well, I got up this morning, all I had was gone. End of quote. Johnson was in his mid-twenties when he sang these songs. Don Law, the great recording engineer who handled the sessions, thought of him as a teenager. Johnson didn't have the worldly dignity of Sun House or Skip James. Neither House nor James ever sounds confused. They sang as men who lived deeply but within limits. In Johnson's voice, there's sometimes an element of shock, less a matter of lost innocence than of innocence willfully given up and remembered anyway. Johnson seemed to take more pleasure out of making music than any other Delta singer. There is rock and roll fun in his guitar playing. You can hear anytime you like. He was, I think, working out a whole new aesthetic that rock and roll eventually completed. A loud, piercing music driven by massive rhythms and a beat so strong that involvement was effortless and automatic. I'm going to reread that. Johnson seemed to take more pleasure out of making music than any other Delta singer. There is rock and roll fun in his guitar playing you can hear anytime you like. He was, I think, working out a whole new aesthetic that rock and roll eventually completed. A loud, piercing music driven by massive rhythms and a beat so strong that involvement was effortless and automatic. Yet Johnson also had more to say than other singers. His music was half seduction, half assault, meant to drive his words home with enormous force. His technique was not only more advanced, it was deeper because it had to be. Only his weakest songs move on an even keel. The greatest shudder and break and explode or twist slowly around, quietly shaking strings into a kind of suspension. Until Johnson has created a mood so delicate and bleak one feels he cannot possibly get out of his song alive. Johnson most, Johnson's most distinctive performances have the tension that comes when almost everything is implied when the worst secrets are hiding in plain talk. With, quote, come on in my kitchen, end of quote, Johnson plays out the sound of a cold wind on his guitar, and his voice rides it. There's a stillness in the music. The loneliness is overpowering, and the feeling of desolation is absolute. The most prosaic lines take on the shape of pure terror. Quote, 
When a woman gets in trouble, everybody throws her down. Looking for her good friend, none can be found. You better come on in my kitchen. There's going to be rain in our door. It was songs like this one, the combination of voice, guitar, words, and the mythical authority that comes when an artist confirms his work with his life, that made Eric Clapton see Johnson's ghost and his own in Jimi Hendrix's death. Quote, Eric wanted to do a Robert Johnson, end of quote, one of Clapton's friends said when Hendrix died. Quote, a few good years and go, end of quote. Johnson's music is so strong that in certain moods it can make you feel that he is giving you more than you could have bargained for, that there is a place for you in these lines of his, quote, she's got a mortgage on my body, a lien on my soul, end of quote. It is no exaggeration to say that Johnson changed the lives of people at distant, changed the lives of people as distant from each other as Muddy Waters, who began his career as a devoted imitator. Dion, who made his way through the terrors of his heroin habit with Johnson's songs for company, and myself. After hearing Johnson's music for the first time, listening to that blasted and somehow friendly voice, the shivery guitar, hearing a score of lines that fit as easily and memorably into each day as Dylan's had, I could listen to nothing else for months. Johnson's music changed the way the world looked to me. Over the years, what had been a fascination with a bundle of ideas and dreams from old American novels and texts a fascination with the foreboding and gentleness that is linked in the most interesting Americans, seemed to find a voice in Johnson's songs. It was the intensity of his music that changed fascination into commitment and a bundle of ideas into what must serve as a point of view. But commitment is a tricky Faustian word. When he first appeared, Robert couldn't play guitar to save his life. Sunhouse told Peter Welding, Johnson hung out with the older blues men, pestering them for a chance to try his hand. And after a time, he went away. It was months later on a Saturday night when they saw him again, still looking to be heard. They tried to put him off, but he persisted. Finally, they let him play for a lull and left him alone with the tables and chairs. Outside, taking the air, House and the others heard a loud, devastating music of a brilliance and purity beyond anything in the memory of the Mississippi Delta. Johnson had nothing more to learn from them. Quote, he sold his soul to the devil in exchange for learning to play like that, House said. 